As the National Assembly resumes from its recess tomorrow, the budget party in controversy is revisited. Can the House of Representatives sweep the allegations against its leadership under the carpet? What happens if the House raises the issue? The man with the allegations is our guest tonight. And a possible showdown on the budget party in Saga looms when both men meet face to face in the hollow chamber tomorrow. Well, that's our focus on the program tonight. What an interesting scenario that will play out tomorrow. So many events that we're expecting to happen tomorrow. Don't forget, the Supreme Court judgment in the Kogis governorship race will come up tomorrow. And also, the National Assembly will resume. What may be a showdown may be happening tomorrow. What a cracker it uh, hopes to be tomorrow. We'll be all waiting and expecting that to happen. Many thanks for joining everyone, wherever you're watching uh, in the world. This is Politics Today live on China's television. And you know what I mean. We are live right now on Facebook. So it means that you can also view us right there on that platform on Facebook, apart from tweeting at us on Twitter, hashtag budget party. That's what we'll be talking tonight. And the interesting part is also you get to be able to watch and interact and be part of the conversation at the same time. Let's know what to make of the matter. Well, that's aside the fact that whenever you're far away from your TV, you can also catch every bit of the program live on your mobile m.chinastv.com or on your computer it's a uh, uh, www.chinastv.com it's an interesting experience that you get to enjoy when you stay with channels television as we bring to you the juiciest political stories that we are following in the land especially as we're talking about the budget padding saga but let's begin with some of the top political stories we're following right now Political Roundup on Channel's Television. Here are your top political stories this time. The eyes of the federal government is fixed on the figures and the trends of the Nigerian economy, and the main aim will be to rescue the nation's economy from recession. After a retreat with experts and cabinet members few days ago, the government has continued with its consultations. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, today met with private sector stakeholders at a quarterly business briefing at the presidential villa, where he says Nigeria cannot afford the usual era of generalization or speculations, which will not help in stopping the recession. Professor Shibadio says Nigeria can only get out of recession by looking at only those solutions that will take full consideration of Nigeria's peculiar circumstances and composition. We really have to look at those solutions that are peculiar to our circumstances. And the former governor of Abia State, Mr. Oji Uzokalu, has given the Buhari government a thumbs up on the move to engage experts in putting in place policies that will help stabilize the nation's economy. The former governor says Nigeria has been experiencing recession for the past two years, only that the situation became worse in 2016. Mr. Kalu said that more money is needed to bring the nation out of the predicament and called on Nigerians to tighten their belts because stabilizing the economy is a gradual process. We need to know that our belts should be tightened. Nigeria saw some dramatic court judgments last year with the delivery of seemingly contradicting positions from courts of coordinate jurisdiction. The political sector was terribly influenced by the trend. That situation appears to have gotten the attention of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mustafa. He said the era of conflicting judgments from courts of equal jurisdiction will soon be a thing of the past. I therefore call upon judicial officers to have due respect for the law and strive to adjudicate in a manner that premised upon the principle of justice. And you're up to date. Those are your top political stories you need to know.
Many thanks for staying with us, everyone and all. We are going into the matter straight off now. Well, tomorrow, September the 20th, the National Assembly will resume. And when the lawmakers gather again at the hallowed chambers, Nigerians will want to know what happens when the man who said the leadership of the House of Representatives were involved in what he says was senseless insertions into the 2016 budget monies running into billions of naira what is now popularly called budget padding several controversies have been generated by this the apc as a party has intervened in the matter because considering the fact that most of the people involved are members of the apc the result of their intervention is at the moment not quite clear the presidential committee on anti-corruption headed by professor hs saga too was interested in the case Honorable Abdulmumi Jibrin, the man with the allegations, has gone to the EFCC. The police to file, he has also gone to the police. He filed petitions against some key members of the House of Representatives. Since he was removed as a chairman of uh, the Appropriations Committee, the old saga has been intense. Tonight, we'll take a look at the issues as the lawmakers get set to go back to work. Well, let's take a look at what could be what may happen to the two major characters in these well look at him there honorable abdul mimin jubrain well some say there could be an investigation on him on the matter which could probably lead to a suspension of the of the of the lawmaker uh, for some people we will say that he is perhaps embarrassed the house with some of these allegations some will call it mind-boggling allegations about the fraud on the alleged fraud on the 2016 budget well well he has been insisting that he wants to speak and other leaders to step aside he also wants the leaders to be investigated since he has filed this petition what about the speaker of the house the man whom honorable jibrin has insisted should step aside well to remove this man you will need two th two third votes of uh, the members uh, to remove him well could that happen what could, I mean, if the House decide to ignore the case, what could happen? Well, they could give reasons of the case, the fact that the case is in court. There are a few court cases hanging over this matter. Well, they could also set up an investigation on the leadership by the resolution of the House. Those are possible things that may happen tomorrow when they resume. But let's take a look at what some other people are saying. Serap. Uh, a non-governmental organization, for example, has gone to court. And what have they done? They are compelling the EFCC, the House, the mandate by, uh, by law to investigate cases relating to issues of financial crimes. So they are asking the EFCC to, as a matter of urgency, uh, as a matter of national importance, to investigate some of the leaders who have been allegedly uh, to have inserted uh, sensitively into the 2016 budget. Those are possibilities of what may happen well, and those things that are happening right now in the case of uh, the budget party. But let me give you uh, 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 a benefit of hindsight of what has happened in the past. Well, some, uh, when this old matter came up, we, we caught up with the man with the allegations on Abu Mumi Jibrin, who told us what all about, I mean, the, the issues relating to the allegations and the reasons why he has raised the alarm after he was removed. But also, we spoke to the other side. Uh, this, the whip of the House of Representatives, Honorable Al Hassan Adodogoa, also spoke with China Television. And this is what he says could happen when the House reconvenes. Take a listen. To be a disciplinary measures against it. disciplinary if you use disciplinary you are even being soft we should have to have a super super and stringent disciplinary measures taken against that maybe movement. maybe re suspending him i don't want to preempt the position of the house remember i'm the chief discipline officer in the house in the chief whip of the house of representatives so you use your whip on him now of course my cane will lash him but subject to the agreement of members of the house of representatives it's a mandate okay. i can't do it alone okay. but in my opinion personally i feel he should be furnished Well, that's the chief whip of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Al Hassan Adodogwa. Interestingly, both of them, Honorable Dogwa and Honorable Jibrin, are from the same state.
Well, we take a moment, and when we return, we dig deep into this matter, and you will hear from the man with the allegation. Join us again.